Our headlines today. The world's richest man, Elon Musk, completes his takeover of the social media giant Twitter for £38 billion. Pounds. He says he wants to help humanity with the deal, but with reports he started by sacking the CEO, will the deal help Twitter itself? An election looms in Northern Ireland as the deadline for restoring a power-sharing executive at Stormont expires. Downing Street insists Rishi Sunak remains committed to tackling climate change despite his decision to miss next month's COP27 climate summit. A coin fit for a king, the first 50p's carrying the image of Charles III are struck and will enter circulation in December. Good morning, it's redemption for Ronaldo after being dropped for disciplinary reasons. He returns with a goal as Manchester United progress to the knockout stages of the Europa League. Right, let's have a look at some of today's front pages, shall we? Starting with The Guardian, it carries the headline, No Way Back, as it reports that the UN has found there is no credible way to keep the international global warming target of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Stories of the Mail, the royal family is preparing for new bitter revelations out of Prince Harry's memoir, which is going to be released in January. The Sun also leads with the royal story. It claims Prince William will not be flying to Qatar for the upcoming World Cup, adding that sources close to the future king say his schedule is too full. And just look at one of the most uh, read stories on BBC News website this morning. Look at the pressures on the NHS out of winter. One medic speaking honestly to the BBC said, I would bring a member of my fam I wouldn't bring a member of my family to this hospital. It's a really good piece, that, actually, if you get a chance to read it today. Um, it was on the front pages, but I thought it would be worth just showing you. This is the front page of Prince Harry's book, uh, the title Spare, referring to the heir and the spare, his position within the royal family. It's, it's going to cause a, a huge, um, well, well, fallout potentially. There's going to be a lot of attention on it when it comes out. I think in January, January next yeah. year in this country, already people are very curious about... Um, what it's going to contain. We'll talk to Jenny Bond a little bit later on about this. Her, her views, she's a former BBC Royal co Correspondent, but her views increasingly on Harry and Meghan are, are quite interesting, actually. ...and see what's dominating. Boosting election hopes for the Conservatives. Rishi Sunak is level with Sakir Starmer as preferred Prime Minister. That's according to a poll in the I newspaper. And the Telegraph leads on plans reportedly being drawn up by Mr Sunak to expand the windfall tax on energy firms in an effort to balance the UK's finances. But the Guardian, though, has a different take, highlighting the bumper profits recorded by energy firm Shell on the day UN finds there's no credible way to limit global temperature rises to 1.5 degrees. The Times has word on the Prime Minister seeking a new deal with France in order to curb channel crossings. Royals in despair, the Metro's top story focuses on concerns among the royal family over the contents of Prince Harry's forthcoming memoir, which will be called Spare. And the Daily Mail has the same story there. While the Sun reports that uh, Prince William will not travel to Qatar to watch England play at the World Cup next month. And if you want to see any of those front pages again, just uh, read those stories, just scan the QR code which is on your screen.